بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope that you all are doing well are staying safe and healthy إن شاء الله On behalf of young Muslims I'd like to welcome you all to our online symposium titled Alone with Allah سبحانه وتعالى My name is Zirwazi Amir and I will be serving as your moderator for tonight. I am a Young Muslims member from the New Hyde Park chapter in New York. Um, I'm currently in my second year of optometry school. I've been involved in YM for about seven years and currently help in the national expansion team. And I am very excited for everyone to join us for our first session tonight. Um, before we start, I want to give a brief introduction about Young Muslims. Young Muslims is a division of ICNA. We are a national youth organization with chapters all across the country, from the East Coast from the West, and to the West Coast. Um, our goal as an organization is to create a safe and supportive environment for our youth. Every year, some of our members work together to hold an annual Young Muslims conference in conjunction with the ICNA convention. Although we weren't able to physically meet due to our current health situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to continue to spread the knowledge of the deen through this online medium. Um, indeed, you know, we plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of all planners. And alhamdulillah, we are still able to benefit through this platform. So I want to give a little quick note on how the format of this session is going to be. At the end of each talk, we will be having a small Q&A with each speaker. So please feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A section or the live comment section. And inshallah, we'll keep an eye out for your questions and have the speaker address them. So with that, we will be moving on to our next session, which is titled The Essence of Time. Um, in this session, we will be talking about how to utilize and organize the extra time that we have efficiently. Our speaker for this talk is Sheikh Abdel Nasser Jangda. Sheikh Abdel Nasser is the founder and director of Qalam Institute. He has taught Arabic at the University of Texas in Arlington from 2005 to 2007. He has served as an instructor and curriculum advisor to various Islamic schools and Islamic studies programs. He served as the imam at the Colleyville Masjid in the Dallas area for about three years. He is the founding member and chairman of Mansfield Islamic Center. While teaching at the Qalam Seminary, he travels around the country teaching classes, seminars, and giving lectures. So with that, I'd like to invite Sheikh Abdel Nasser Jangda to uh, present his talk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, Bismillahi wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. It is uh, a pleasure to be uh, on here with you today. Alhamdulillah, um, you know, just real quickly um, to kind of share my own personal sentiments uh, being here with y'all as a part of this broadcast and as a part of the uh, ICNA National Symposium here today. Uh, this is, of course, the weekend that we were all uh, eagerly looking forward to congregating together uh, in, you know, in D.C., uh, tens of tens of thousands of Muslims from all around the country. Sometimes, you know, I, I run into people at the ICNA convention who have come from even other countries just to attend uh, the convention. So it definitely, there is a sense of, um, to be very frank and honest, there is a sense of sadness. Um, sadness in and of itself is not a bad thing. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on a much more, uh, in a much more serious situation, very famously in the authentic narration of Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, in When his son passed away, when his baby passed away, the Prophet ﷺ said that the heart feels sadness, grief and sorrow. So there is a sense of sadness. Uh, that we were not able to get together and that we were not able to be in each other's company and that we were not able to all have a rejuvenating, a spiritually rejuvenating experience. Uh, all of us there together. But at the end of the day, as the Prophet ﷺ said in that very famous hadith and narration, that, that we will not say anything that could 
ever dare bring any kind of displeasure to our Lord. We will only say those things that are pleasing to our Lord. And what that means is that at the end of the day, we always have faith. We always have trust. We always know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. And we always trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever Allah's plan is. And so alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, um, I personally am very, very grateful uh, to the entire team at ICNA, from the leadership to uh, the regional workers to the volunteers. Uh, I am very grateful to all of them that they did not basically just, you know, um, quote unquote, take the weekend off. Uh, but rather what they did was that they all came together and they right away started reaching out to everyone everywhere and they put this program together so that uh, folks like yourself and myself, people like my family and your family, uh, everyone watching at home, that all of us would be able to spend a little time together and all of us would be able to, you know, hopefully have a spiritually rejuvenating experience a little bit differently than maybe we initially hoped for and planned for, but that's okay. Again, because we have faith and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his plan. And so we'll make the best of the situation. And alhamdulillah, we're here. I was able to log on just a few minutes before uh, I was set to go on and I got to hear uh, Imam Sirat speaking and that you know, made my day and made my evening. Uh, getting to hear some words of wisdom from Imam Siraj uh, brightened my day. So Alhamdulillah, Thumb Alhamdulillah. So my topic here today is time and the essence of time. One of the most fascinating things in the entire Quran, right? The Quran, of course, Kalamullah. Hatta yisma'a kalam Allah, right? So the Quran is the speech of God himself. These are the words of the Almighty himself. So the Quran is the most amazing thing that humanity has ever witnessed, has ever interacted with, um, because these are the words of Allah himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ That if we would have sent down this Quran upon a mountain, you would have seen it just completely humbled and obliterated. You would have seen it completely humbled and obliterated because of the magnitude and the majesty and the magnificence of the Quran. So the Quran is so powerful. It's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means every single word in the Quran is the speech of Allah himself. So it's really important for us to pay attention to it. It's really important for us to really study it carefully. Every word, every letter, every little thing, we need to pay attention to it. And within the Quran, there are many different kinds of what we can call kinds of speech. There are many different... Um, you know, elements of speech that are presented within the Quran. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is styles of speech, uslub. There are many asalib within the Quran. There are many styles of speech within the Quran. And again, to even more uh, elaborate even more, what that means is some places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do certain things and forbids us from doing certain things. That is called imperative speech. It is a directive. It is imperative. It is very, very straightforward. Do this, don't do this. Do this, don't do this. So the Quran has that kind of speech in it, number one. Number two, a second type of speech that we see within the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us stories, al-qisas. Allah tells us stories and teaches us lessons and gives us guidance through the mechanism of stories. That's another style of speech. So that's in the Quran as well. Another kind of speech is sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents to us um, conversations, dialogue within the Quran. The people of paradise are saying this to the people of hell and the people of hell are saying this to the people of paradise, so on and so forth. So there's dialogue. That is another way. That is another style of speech. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us examples and parables. Imagine if like when Allah gives us the example of um, backbiting, 
right? I wanted to use a little bit of a lighter example, but that's the first one that came to my mind because I was recently reading something on Surah Al-Hujarat. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gives us the example of backbiting. So when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gives us the example of backbiting, He says, imagine someone whose sibling just died and after their sibling has died, the corpse, the dead body of their sibling is right there, that they then go and start to rip the flesh. They like take the arm and bite into it and rip out a part of the flesh and eat it. Like how bizarre, how gross, how unfathomable, how disgusting would that be to witness that? Let alone do it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that's the example of backbiting. So that's another kind of speech in the Quran. And in this way, I can go on and on. There's question and answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us rhetorical questions in the Quran. That's another kind of speech. So another kind of speech that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents to us in the Quran is what's called aqsam, al-qasam, aqsam, which means oaths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents oaths. He takes an oath. He swears by something. He swears by something. All right? I'll start with one example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, um, Alif Lam Mim Ra, uh, or Alif Lam Ra, til, uh, uh, wal kitab, Ha Mim, Wal Kitab Al Mubin. That's the one I was looking for. Ha Mim, or Yasin, Wal Quran Al Hakim. There's one everyone knows. Yasin, Wal Quran Al Hakim. So Allah says Yasin, and then He says, and He swears by the wise Quran, the Quran that is full of wisdom. So that's an oath presented in the Quran, where Allah swears by the wisdom of the Quran, okay? So we have a lot of oaths presented throughout the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a very emphatic, powerful point, He's giving us a take-home point, something we need to write down, something we need to take home, something we need to think about, something we need to ponder upon. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath there, all right? And what is absolutely fascinating is one of the most frequent things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath based on, what he takes an oath upon within the Quran is time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran takes oaths upon time. So many examples of this. All right, some of the most common verses and common ayat surahs that we know, they have this. Well, Fajr. Allah swears by Al Fajr. What is Fajr? Fajr is time, the morning time, early morning, the break of dawn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by Well, Layli. Well, Layli idha yagsha. He swears by night. Well, Nahari idha tajalla. In daytime. What is night and what is day? It is time. Night time and day time. All right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa shamsi wa duhaha, talks about the rising of the sun. And then the incline of the sun, the mid-morning, late morning. Wal qamari idha talaha, night time, when the moon can be seen. Wal nahari idha jallaha, day time. Wal layli idha yakshaha, night time. Wadduha, mid morning, he's swearing by time. So, one of the most common things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by in the Quran is time. And one of the things that the scholars of tafsir, the mufassirun that they teach us, that they tell us, is that one of the wisdoms and one of the lessons that we take from the oaths that are in the Quran is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, He is elevating that thing. He is highlighting its significance, its value, its beauty, and in many cases, even its sacredness, that it's a sacred thing. It's a very, very sacred thing. And one of the oaths in the Quran, and I talked about this, all the oaths that Allah takes based on time. One of those oaths 
based on time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes within the Quran that is very powerful. And it's not just the oath, but then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that basically is our topic here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal Asr. He swears by, and now Asr, we know it as the evening time because that's when we pray the Asr prayer. And it can allude to that, it does allude to that. However, more linguistically, the word Asr refers to a time that very easily or very quickly slips away. It's a time that very easily and very quickly slips away. And that's actually why one of the wisdoms behind why Asr prayer is called Asr. Because Asr prayer is actually one of the prayers that is the easiest to miss. And it's not just, you know, it was at that time. It's, this is a, a, a thing that has always been very common throughout the world, societies, different cultures, different eras, different situations. The Asr prayer very quickly, very easily can slip through your fingers. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ in a very famous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says in an authentic narration of Bukhari, he says, Man al bardain dakhl al -jannah. Whoever can find a way to be very, very punctual and regular about two prayers will make it to paradise. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that they are only going to pray two prayers every day and skip three prayers. No, the point is there are two prayers that if you can lock down these two prayers, all the other three prayers are going to fall into place. And then once all the other three prayers fall into place, all your five daily prayers are in place. Everything else in your life will start to fall into place. Like the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, uh, The very first thing that the slave will be reckoned for and accounted for on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection, is the prayer. فَإِن صَلُوحَتْ صَلُوحَ سَائِرُ عَمَلِهِ When, if it is correct, all the rest of his deeds will start to fall into place. What in fasadat, but if that is corrupted, his prayer is not correct and good, then all the rest of his deeds will also be negatively affected by that. So, once again, what I was saying was Asr prayer. Very, very uh, delicate situation. It can slip away very quickly, very easily. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, lock down two prayers and all the other prayers will fall into place. What are those two prayers? He said, it is Fajr and Asr. If you can lock down your Fajr prayer, if you can lock down your Asr prayer, all your other start prayers will start to fall into place. Once all your other prayers start to fall into place, then everything else in your life starts to come into place. So, in going back, and, and there are so many other references. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hafidu ala salawat. Take care of all your prayers. Was salatil wusta, in the middle prayer. And there's an authentic narration of the Prophet sallallahu that tells us that the middle prayer that he's referring to is actually the Asr prayer. The Asr prayer. So Asr prayer. So going back to the surah, Wal Asr, Allah swears by time. Not just any time, but I was explaining that linguistically, the word Asr refers to time as it is getting away. Time that very quickly slips away. Time that very easily you can lose track of. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says time. It's running out. You're losing track of it. And then what does he say next? And here's the problem. Okay, let me give a little analogy. And I'll apologize in advance. Uh, I have a personal problem. And that is most of my analogies that I give are sports analogies. It's a personal problem. Uh, I can't help myself. You can see right there. Where am I? There we go. I always have trouble doing that on camera. So you see right there. Um, so most of my analogies tend to be sports analogies. So it's just a, a weakness I have. So allow me to explain. If some, if a team has a lead, 
If a team has, you know, let's say in basketball, uh, a team's got, uh, you know, a 30-point lead, and there's four minutes left in the game, and they say time is running out. The team that's got a 30-point lead with four minutes left in the game, they're not bothered by time running out. Time running out is great. That's fantastic. I win if time runs out. In football, if a team's got like a three-touchdown lead, two-touchdown lead, and there's two minutes left in the game, and they say, oh, it's a two-minute warning, time's running out, two-touchdown lead. The team who's got the lead, they're not worried. They're like, this is great, fantastic, awesome, right? I know shopping is a big struggle for people right now, right? You go to Costco, okay, and you got your whole cart full of everything, all right? And you are at the register, and that's when you hear the the PA, the public announcement, right? That basically says that, uh, you know, we're closing down. We're closing down. Time's running out. Hurry up. We're closing down. I already got, I already found all my stuff and I'm at the register. I'm not bother, bothered by time running out at all. Okay. But now let me flip it around. What if you parked your car you're walking in, you haven't actually gotten in there, and that's when you hear the announcement, we're closing. It is now closed. That's really bad news for you. That's really, really bad news for you because I didn't get my stuff yet, right? In the, those sports analogies, if you're the team that's down by 30 points and there's four minutes left in the game, that's really bad news for you. You're down by two touchdowns and two-minute warning, that's terrible news for you. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by time, its value, its preciousness, how it's getting away. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna insana lafi husnin. Here's the problem. You don't have a lead. You're not winning this game. You didn't already find all your stuff. You're not already waiting at the register. Allah says, Inna linsana lafi khusrin. Human beings, you're losing. Literally, khusr, khusran. It literally means to lose. Human beings are ruined. You're losing big time. You're way behind. And time is running out. That's when the, when the alarm goes off. That's when the sirens go off. This is code red. This is an emergency situation. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? How are we going to survive? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman and Rahim. Wadud and Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. Allah is loving. Allah is kind. Allah is generous. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Illa ladheen. Illa. Except for the following people. The following people are not going to lose. And time is going to run out. Time is actually going to start to slip away faster and faster and faster. Not slower. No, 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 not slower. That's the interesting thing. All right. Take it from somebody who obviously, right, Father Time is definitely <laughs> winning the battle with me. All right. So take it from me. Um, when you're young and it feels like, man, Time is running out. Like time is moving quickly. It feels like time moves quickly. And you look at old people and you're like, man, that must really feel like a drag. Like time must really be dragging. One of the most surprising things about getting older is that you realize that time slips more and more and more quickly, not slower. It feels like time moves even faster. When you're 30, you're like, Man, time moves even faster than when I was 20. When you're 40, you're like, wow, time moves faster than when I was 30, and so on and so forth. And so that's the thing about time. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, except for the people. Who are the people who are not going to lose? They're not going to lose. All right? The following. They have the following things taken care of. They're doing the following things. For them, they're going to win. The buzzer is going to go off and they're actually going to have a parade. Who are those people? Number one, First of all, believe. 
they believe. They believe in Allah, they believe in the Prophet ﷺ. And this issue of faith and belief is not so simple as like, I said the words, I believe in Allah, I believe in the Messenger. Ta-da, done. No, no, it's not just that simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal amanu, aminu. Ya ayyuhal amanu, aminu. O you who believe, O those who have believed, believe, deepen, further your faith in your iman. Solidify it. Believe harder, believe better. Rise, grow in your faith in your iman. And now how do you do that? Somebody might say, how do you do that? Well, the first part of that, a big part of that, is you have to get to know Allah better. And you have to get to know the Prophet Sallallahu better. Those are the two things that you have to do. Okay? And this kind of works into the practicality of my topic here today. Because obviously there's a big issue about how do we utilize our time wisely in the current situation that we're in. How do we utilize our time wisely? So I'm going to work it into my topic here. So we got to get to know Allah better and we got to get to know the Prophet Sallallahu better. That's number one. How do you get to know Allah better? Read the Quran. You got to read the Quran and not just recite, read, comprehend, understand. Read the Quran and read a translation of the Quran alongside of it. Listen to the explanation of the Quran by scholars. Read the explanation of the, of the Quran by highly qualified scholars. But you must better and deepen your understanding of the Quran. And that's how you get to know Allah better. Number two, get to know the Prophet ﷺ. That's the second part of it. How do you get to know the Prophet ﷺ better? Read the life, the seerah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Whatever. People always ask, well, where, what book, what do you recommend? Anything you can find. Even if it be super easy and simple. Sealed nectar, something like that. Find a basic simple book. Read. Start somewhere. And then also listen to explanation of the life of the Prophet ﷺ from scholars, right? Uh, at Qalam, if you go to the Qalam podcast, there's not one, there are three separate series on the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And they're all like various uh, sizes and various angles. There's one series, 23 sessions, a quick overview of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Another series that's done more so for younger people, and it's a little bit more extensive. And then there is a series, a very lengthy, in-depth, detailed series, 200 episodes. And all those series are there. So wherever you go. But my point is you have to start learning. You have to start reading. You have to start listening. You have to start increasing your knowledge and your familiarity with the life of the Prophet Because when you know more about his life, you know him better. So know Allah, know his messenger. That's how you increase your faith. All right. Number two, وَعَمِلُوا salihat. You have to do good deeds. You have to do good deeds. Okay? That's the second part. If you don't want to lose when time runs out, when the buzzer goes off, you don't want to lose, then you got to do more good. How do you do more good? And this, again, is working into the practicality of how do we use our time wisely, especially in this situation. Once again, pay attention. This is the next point. Do good deeds. What's an example of good deeds that we can do in the situation we're in? Number one, five times daily prayer. I know somebody might say, well, duh, obviously that's mandatory. You have to do it. That's fine. If you already are there, mashallah, good for you. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you. And I mean that sincerely. I'm not being sarcastic. That's very, very good. But a lot of people aren't there yet. And so I'm talking to all my brothers and sisters who might not be there yet. Let's lock down those five daily prayers. Let's lock it down. Let's nail it down. Let's make sure we are we got that down. And and I have a couple of recommendations about those five daily prayers, especially with the self-isolating situation. If you're not a you know healthcare uh, worker, you're not an essential services worker. Uh, if you are from those categories, may Allah bless you. May Allah protect you. May Allah keep you safe. May Allah keep your family safe. May Allah reward you abundantly. You know, people of this dunya will never appreciate uh, anyone 
as they should be appreciated um, and a lot of times looking for gratitude and appreciation from people unfortunately will make you uh, disappointed most of the time but know that there are people that do appreciate you know that there are people making dua for you and know that your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala greatly appreciates you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of his attributes is ash-shakur ash-shakur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges the good that people do so you are going through a lot of sacrifice you are doing a lot of good and you are working very hard and your Lord acknowledges you so going back to what I was saying for a lot of people who are in the isolate uh, isolation situation you're mo you're at home then in that situation I have a couple of things not only are you gonna nail down your five daily prayers but try to find a little corner it can just be a little corner of the room where you put down a prayer rug and that little corner you pray in that corner like have a designated place where you pray all right that's number one number two is not only nail down the prayer but also try to be punctual punctuality nothing is more beloved to Allah when people are punctual about their prayer the Prophet ﷺ was asked what's the best deed he said as-salatu ala waqtiha be punctual with prayer so have a little alarm system or you know your your prayer timing app or whatever it is but follow with that and the second it goes off you pray so get those times nailed down get that place designated that's a really important thing you can do in terms of doing good deeds all right the next thing within good deeds that i need to mention is very important i already talked about reading quran so Again, I want to bring it up here again. Quran is one of the best good deeds that you can do. All right? But along with that, make time every single day for dua. We're all struggling. We're all stressed. There's a lot of people who are suffering a lot more than we are. We need lots of dua. The whole ummah together right now needs to be making dua, supplicating, praying to Allah. you got to have fixed time to make dua. The third point Allah makes is, you have to enjoin good. You have to enjoin good. You have to put some good out there into the world. So be a part of something good right now. If you can actually volunteer, like Ikhna Relief volunteers, may Allah bless them, may Allah reward them. Um, they're amazing. Amazing. They In cities all over this country, they are going to... Uh, neighborhoods they are going to different places and they are providing essential food and items essential items to people who can't afford them even in this situation I've seen them I've seen the videos I've seen the pictures I've seen the social media updates they're all wearing the the, the green and yellow shirts all right um, they they all have their masks on they got the gloves on and subhanallah mashallah may Allah bless them may Allah reward them they're out there helping people they're putting good out into the world even in this situation and if somebody cannot do that if somebody cannot do that then help out in any other way that you can donate money contribute whatever you can give will do a lot of good will do a lot of good spread the word spread some khayr spread some good spread some knowledge all right so what the wasa bil haqi what the wasa bil sabr and then you have to remind each other to be patient we got to keep each other strong we got to keep each other strong how do we keep each other strong da nah, this is this is very very important okay it doesn't need to be something super grand you don't need to be some influencer, quote unquote, who's got like a million people on Instagram and you do some, you know, video or Instagram live that makes everybody like, hey, I hope everyone's doing okay. That's really nice for the people that do it. I'm not criticizing them. But I'm saying a lot of times we, we got this twisted mentality that that's the only way that I can, you know, provide some comfort to people out there. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. I'll give you an example. And I don't want to share this because it's my own deed and my own action, but I'll share it um, just as an example of hopefully it can maybe inspire you. But I'll ask you to pray that Allah, you know, uh, Allah accepts from me and Allah forgives me. Um, I have a very good friend. 
And his daughter is very, very sick. I have a very, very dear friend and his little girl, very, very small child, six years old. She's very, very sick. Like very sick. I'm not talking about she's got like a little cold or something like that. No, severely ill. I mean, she's she's a kid with cancer. Um, and she's going through chemotherapy as a baby, as a child. And it's obviously very, very tough. And then this whole situation happens while that's going on. And I call my friend and I just say, hey, how's it going? I hope you're doing okay. Hang in there, buddy. Everything will be all right. Can I help you with anything? And then he talks to me. And then he tells me about his day. And I just sit and I just listen. And I just lend him my ear. And maybe that hopefully made his day a little bit easier for him. And I told him, hang in there. Be tough. Be strong. And that's just Abdul Nasser. That's just me as Abdul Nasser, just reaching out to a friend. And all of us, we have the ability to do that. We can all call somebody up. We can all reach out to somebody and make sure that they're doing okay and check on them and give them a little time. So this is time, the value of time. When someone's time is up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you don't, Allah will not give you a second less, but Allah will also not give you a second more. Time is time. It's very, very valuable. It's very precious. And it's one of the most, it is the most precious commodity that we've been given. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us time is running out and we could lose. We could be standing there empty handed when everything is said and done. How do we make sure that doesn't happen? Strengthen your faith. Get to know God better. Get to know the Prophet ﷺ better. Read the Quran. Learn the Seerah. That's something we can do in the situation that we're in right now. Number two, do good deeds. Pray and give charity. Pray and give charity. Pray and give charity. That's good deeds that we can do right now. We're capable of doing it right now. Number three, put some good out there into the world. Once again, give charity and share opportunities, uh, tell people about how they can do good, you know, text your friends, text your family, and then put, you know, help provide some strength and encouragement for patients to other people. Encourage one another. Give strength to one another by just picking up the phone and calling somebody, FaceTiming somebody, reaching out to somebody and making sure they're doing okay. And lastly and finally, as I conclude uh, my topic here today, I wanted to um, specifically ask everyone who is watching, who is listening, who benefited uh, and will continue to benefit from this program and anyone who has ever benefited from ICNA, you know, in the past, uh, please be very generous and contribute and donate to ICNA today. Um, there are tireless people working all around this country, uh, doing so much good work. Um, so please, inshallah, support the good work that Ikna does. And we hope and we pray, inshallah, inshallah, bidnillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us out of this situation sooner rather than later, safe and sound. And then inshallah, very, very soon, by the will and permission of Allah, we are able to congregate and have a convention and we're able to spend some beautiful time together rejuvenating our iman. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallah fikum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you so much for that really um, practical explanation of Surat al-Asr. Um, this now brings us into our Q&A. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please type them in the comment section and we will try to get your questions answered. So the first question that I have, Sheikh Abdul Nasser, is what do you recommend in terms of dividing up our night to make it the most productive, especially for students or professionals that will be studying or working from home in Ramadan? Do you have any tips that you can provide? Yes, one particular um, tip that I hope is uh, beneficial and useful. I've been thinking about this myself a lot. Obviously, like I said, um, trying to create a schedule and kind of keep yourself on task is very, very helpful, number one. 
But number two, I personally am also realizing, because we're all learning on the fly, I've never, quote unquote, worked from home before. Um, so, you know, a lot of folks, a lot of IT folks and things like that are in the work from home kind of situation, even in the normal circumstances. I never experienced it. So uh, I'm trying to learn a lot of it myself. But one of the things I'm learning about is um, space and kind of what you have in front of you also makes a profound difference. Um, so if somebody doesn't have like a lot of room where they can kind of get up and move to a different room and do one thing over there and do another thing over here, this desk, for instance, I have this computer open and this computer usually open when I'm doing some kind of work. I'm teaching my classes at the at the Qalam Seminary. I'm, you know, participating in the Ikhna Symposium. I'm doing something that is more kind of task oriented, uh, Dawa work, teaching work. Uh, I'm doing it in front of this computer. When I am sitting at the same computer, however, for my own recitation of the Quran or something like that, what I do is I actually close the computer and I actually put it away. I just move it off the desk because if it's open, there's just something about that concentration focus that is very hard to achieve. Um, Alhamdulillah, the other thing that we've been able to do is our living room, we just kind of carved out a corner of it uh, and we just have prayer rugs down there and that's where we pray, that's where we read Quran, myself and the family, the kids and whatnot. And um, that also kind of provides a little bit of focus. Um, so I've kind of noticed the benefit of what's in front of you and just kind of carving out a little bit of space um, goes a long way to helping somebody focus. Because I think everyone understands that we got to make time for everything, but then the focus and the concentration is really, really hard to achieve. But that's something that has helped me. Jazakallah here. Um, I really um, I like that point of designating a place and you mentioned that in your talk too about designating a place for prayer and being punctual um, since Allah is one of the most important meetings in our day that we have the to do it five times a day it's really important to um yeah and, and um, before i forget i wanted to share with everyone because i don't want it to sound like it's just kind of like a recommendation from me we actually see this in the sunnah of the prophet so the prophet he had like a bedspread that would be put down in his private quarters uh and that's what he would sleep on but when he would pray he would actually kind of roll it up a little bit move it off to the side and right there he kind of changed the setting he ended up changing the setting. Um, and that's that he's teaching us through his example. Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the believers, she later on in her life, because the Prophet sallallahu of course was laid to rest in what used to be her apartment. So then she had another residence, another apartment. So the apartment that she had, there was like an inside portion and then there was kind of like an open air kind of like area, like a little courtyard. Um, so what she would do is she would actually pray if it wasn't raining or anything, she would pray outside in the courtyard because inside was where she lived. So she'd pray outside in the courtyard area. If she, you know, she would go to the masjid for the prayers, but her own personal ibadah, she would do in that little kind of open air kind of courtyard area. And that also kind of helped to separate between kind of mentally the focus of here's my living quarters and this is where I come to pray. Great advice. Um, so the next question we have is, um, now that we have more time um, that we're spending at home, uh, Shaitan can get to us and then we tend to like browse the web, maybe looking at things that our eyes should not be looking at. So can you give any tips on how to maybe limit this or prevent this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um... You know, I'm going to repeat something that, um, you know, parents are going to be very familiar with. And that is one of the first things when you become a parent and you start figuring out how to manage devices and the Internet and things like that for the sake of your kids. Uh, one of the first things that you, you read about that you're told is that the internet can only be used, the computers only stay in, the tablets only remain in the public areas of the home, in the public areas of the house, the living room or the dining table, or like if that's where they do their homework and things like that, you know, but that's the only places where it stays. Um, and I think that regardless of who you are, a teenager, an adult, whoever you are, especially where there's this kind of cabin fever and there's this restlessness and there's this angst and it feels like you are kind of getting hammered by shaitan a lot um, and you're already kind of vulnerable and already, um, you know, just kind of edgy. 
um, and Shaitan just kind of needs to come and just kind of flick you and you just go flying off the ledge. So in that kind of a situation, my sincere, sincere advice to everyone is take your computer, take your tablet, and basically just keep it in the living room and you're only going to use it in the public area of the home. Uh, don't take it to your bedroom. I, I, for, for especially for everyone, that's very important advice. Teenagers, young adults. Um, I know that that probably sounds really lame. Um, and that probably sounds like really annoying, uh, that what every single time I want to like, you know, use my phone or my iPad or, or sorry, my laptop or my iPad, I got to go out to the living room. I, I sincerely recommend it and you will be better for it. Thank you for that advice. Um, something that I would also just like to add, one of my teachers um, taught me was that, um, like sometimes, you know, we, you know, we waste our time on browsing between things. And, you know, so one, one something that you can do is actually, she told us like, you can have a cutout that says Allah is watching or Allah is all seeing. And just having that constant reminder on your devices, um, obviously it does guilt you, but then that's a good thing because it prevents- Yeah, well, that's great. That's, that's, that's right amazing. Up. So that's I actually amazing. have like a cutout on my laptop or just in my room. Yeah, and, and it's making me think, you know, because these days, you know, uh, all the hipster kids, they always got like stickers on their devices, right? So everyone's got little stickers and things like that on their devices. So that what sister just said is amazing. Just kind of right, Allah is watching. You just tape it right there to the side of your laptop. And I mean, every time you're on your computer, you see that telling you Allah is watching. That's awesome, mashallah. Um, so we'll have two more questions, inshallah. So another one is, um, how do we handle the discouragement, uh, discouragement of trying to have prayed for years and still not being on top of it? Um, so sort of coming to terms with your shortcoming of knowing that you're not really on top of your prayers. Okay, I'm going to answer this question by sharing a story with you. And it's going to seem kind of like a curveball. Uh, it's going to seem like I'm not directly answering your question, but I am. All right. Uh, and, and whoever the questioner was, and when, you, when, I, when, I, when I get to the end, hopefully you'll realize how I was answering your question. So Khalid bin Walid, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. We all know his name. We've all heard the name Khalid bin Walid. He was called Saifullah, the sword of God. All right. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, you know, uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu had a lot of confidence in Khalid to defend his song. So Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu was from Mecca. He knew the Prophet Sallallahu his whole life. And Khalid bin Walid became Muslim 20 years after the, the message of Islam came. He didn't become, he did not become Muslim for 20 years. He became Muslim in the seventh year of Hijrah, three years before the Prophet passed away. 20 years he did not accept the song. Not only that, during those 20 years, he not only was not Muslim, he actually fought against the Prophet. He opposed the Prophet, peace be upon him. Okay? 20 years later, he finally becomes Muslim. He comes and he sits down in front of the Prophet to accept his song. The Prophet says, Repeat after me, and he gives him the Shahada. All right? Khalid is then looking down. He won't look at the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet said, Khalid, right here, look at me. And he said, no, I, 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 feel, I feel embarrassed. I feel terrible. I'm a terrible person. I fought you. I killed Muslims. I, I, I just, just, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. And he said, there's nothing to be ashamed of. He said, إِنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ يَجُبُّ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ يَهْدِمُ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ you became Muslim today. You reconciled with Allah today. Everything that happened before this moment is gone. Ancient history. It's over. And then he said, pray for me that Allah forgives me. He says, you don't need it. You are forgiven. He said, yeah, then just pray for me. I want your prayers. And he said, oh, Allah have mercy on Khalid. And he said, I feel better now. <laughs> and you got to understand that every single Second, every single minute of your life, every single prayer is an opportunity to fix your relationship with Allah. And that moment when you reconnect with Allah and you fix your relationship with Allah, everything that came before that is gone, is wiped away, is ancient history, it don't exist no more. 
not only that, but everything wrong you did, Allah will convert it to good. All the prayers that you prayed, like you said, you missed a bunch of prayers, you didn't do them properly, you weren't focused in them, they'll all be converted to perfect prayers. Some be like, how does that work? That doesn't make any... It absolutely works. It's called the mercy of Allah. In the rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Allah says, my mercy encompasses everything. In the rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. My mercy supersedes, outdoes my wrath and my anger. So that's what I would tell somebody who feels down, who feels a little terrible, who feels a little demoralized, that I haven't been on my prayer, I haven't been on top of my prayers until today. Don't worry. Right now is the opportunity. Right now, when this session's done, you're going to go make wudu, you're going to pray Salat al-Isha, and that right there is going to fix everything that happened before, and it's going to be a fresh new beginning going forward, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, thank you for those uh, nice, beautiful words. Um, so, alhamdulillah, that, that's uh, all the time that we have for your questions. I apologize if I, we weren't able to answer all your questions. Um, but uh, thank you so much, uh, Sheikh Abdel Nasser, for your time, for speaking, and uh, really sharing some practical tips that we can implement um, now and continue into Ramadan. Um, Sheikh Abdel Nasser, you uh, worked a lot with YM. Alhamdulillah, we've yes. tremendously benefited from your talks for years and years on conferences and even um, at a local and regional levels. I just wanted to ask you, how has your experience with YM been? YM has been something, YM for me has been absolutely uh, mind-blowing. What I mean by that, and I don't want to just seem like I'm giving like just like an empty kind of like, you know, pat on the back. Um, I want to talk about it in a very real sense. What is astounding to me about YM is that it is young people serving young people. That's amazing. It is young people taking care of the other young people in the Ummah. Like the neighbor nets are the most beautiful thing. Where you got YM alum, you know, putting this structure together who are now taking in all these new kids that are coming in and talking to them and mentoring them and coaching them, right? Like the big brother, big sister system. Everyone's like, oh, you know what we really need in a Muslim community? We need like a big brother, big sister kind of thing. Yeah, it's called YM. That's literally what it's called. And it's absolutely beautiful. There are thousands tens of thousands of young people all around this country who mashallah found their deen and now some of them are not even so young anymore a lot of them look like me now right where they found their deen they found their iman they found brothers they found sisters for the for themselves they found company good company a community their deen their islam they found their confidence their self-esteem by being a part of ym um, mashallah, it's a beautiful, beautiful effort. It's been a remarkable thing. And that's why uh, whenever, you know, YM folks, they text me, I text them back. They call me, I call them back. Uh, they ask me to just come hang out for a little while, which they don't ask as much anymore because they probably don't want to scare all the kids by inviting an uncle over. But whenever they do ask me, I always make time because I value the work that they do. It's a beautiful effort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve it and may Allah protect it. Thank you so much. And we really value the time and commitment you have given towards YM and really helped our cause. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, reward you. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, allow your family to stay safe and healthy during this time. Um, so with that, uh, do you have any last words before we conclude? Or? I just want to say salam to everybody and I want to tell my brothers and sisters who are out there, please, please, please uh, hang in there. Uh, Keep having hope, keep having faith. At any point you start to feel really um, like you're struggling um, physically, of course, please get help. Um, and, and But even emotionally and spiritually and psychologically, please do not go it alone. That, that There's no strength in that. We are an ummah. We're an ummah. We are together. That's our strength is that we're an ummah. So reach out. Uh, talk to somebody. Call somebody. Get some help. And one little word, if I may, and this is me advising myself and anyone else who can benefit from it. Those of us whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided at least a roof over our head and some food on our table and we're okay and safe, there's a lot of people that aren't. Um, please help. Please help somebody. Uh, decrease a little bit off your plate, even if that's what it takes. 
and uh, put a put a morsel of food in somebody else's mouth who's hungry. There's a lot of folks who are struggling out there. Um, it keeps me up at night. It's 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 there's a lot of people who are struggling so please do whatever you can it's a little encouragement for myself and for anyone else whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the ability to be of good and of service to other people that's all i would want to say thank you so much once again um, for taking your time out and uh, coming to join us and uh, presenting on your topic which was very beneficial i i my notes i've been constantly writing as i was moderating this session um mm -hmm. So with that said, this uh, brings us to a close. May Allah subhanahu we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, our families, and to grant us strength during these difficult times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all the organizers and the wonderful speakers who took so much time out of their busy schedules to plan and for the speakers to come and share and speak um, and spread the knowledge of the deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to you know, implement what we have learned because there is no benefit in learning if you're not actually impl implementing it in your life and making it a part of your life. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the istiqama uh, to be able to do that. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those that are sick from, you know, COVID-19 a speedy and, you know, complete recovery and all those that are not you know, sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent them from being sick and keep them healthy. And all those healthcare workers that are working long, arduous hours to protect and to uh, those that are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and um, grant them the best in this world and the next. Um, so with that said, I just wanted to say that this was a, uh, um, this whole program was um, from YM, um, organized by young people. And so uh, please, you know, if you've benefited from anything, uh, we would greatly appreciate your donations. Any, nothing is too small. Uh, so please donate whatever you can. If you can't donate, then at least spread the word. Um, and with with your donations, we, will, we would be able to continue to provide beneficial programming. So check ICNA out, check YM out. Um, look, you know, our social media platforms are shared um, you can, you know, uh, go on any of them or visit our website. Um, also, you can look at ICNA and ICNA Relief, which is doing amazing work for um, during this time. So with that said, um, please stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay indoors. And um, I'd like to conclude. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you all have a good night. Take care.